Hi everyone, welcome to HornCamp Connect. This is our first pre-recorded HornCamp Connect of this year, and we're very excited to feature Patty Wolf, one of our pianists from HornCamp. Thank you, Patty, for being here. Well, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yes. I Again, I see you are wearing your HornCamp's finest. I am. My favorite t-shirt from camp. That's awesome. Uh, so Patty is uh, the professor of collaborative piano at the University of Texas in Austin, the Butler School of Music. And we are very honored to have her as uh, one of our accompanists and pianists at, at Horn Camp. Today on our uh, Horn Camp Connect, we're gonna be asking a number of questions that are relevant to our participants and our online participants and um, our whole audience who uh, you know, may not actually have that many opportunities to work with the pianist. And so we're hoping that we're gonna address some subjects that, that are interesting and fun. Um, one of the first things I'd like to ask you is about, um, about being a, a collaborative pianist. Um, what, you know, some people may not be that familiar with that term and what that entails. Can you uh, explain what a collaborative, collaborative pianist is and does? Yeah, I do get that question quite often, especially if I tell someone, oh, I'm in the collaborative piano department at UT, and they say, what's that? And I say, well, it's kind of the way it sounds, but I think Years ago, the term accompanist was uh, shut down. People felt offended by it um, because it sounds something like we're below the person that we're playing with. So I think they, you know, got a new term called collaborative. But um, I, I don't even I don't know if there is a right term for it, but in our in our field it means that you know we are collaborating with someone we're playing sonatas or trios or quartets and um that's kind of i think all over the country now there are collaborative programs but when i was in school we didn't have that it, we just got our degrees in piano not collaborative piano that's interesting and uh, thank you for updating us on the proper terminology. And uh, I will admit that I already have one strike from this uh, from this interview because I use the term accompaniment. So now I stand <laughs> corrected. Um, so it's fine. I'm not offended by it. I, oh. I, I'm never offended by that. I... Great, awesome. Well, um, but even still, so like what, I mean, you said that when you went to school, it was just you went to school for piano. And nowadays there are differing, um, I'm guessing, tracks. So how does a collaborative pianist track differ from other piano players? Oh, it's quite different. So if you get a degree in collaborative piano, um, at least in our program, and I think many programs across the country, you do absolutely no solo playing at all. And um, the whole point of the degree is to accumulate as much rep as you possibly can in all instruments, vocal and getting orchestral experience and band playing in, you know, uh, woodwind ensemble, things like that. But you do not ever play a concerto yourself or a Beethoven sonata, a, you know, piano sonata. Um, so it's it's quite a change because you... You can't get a collaborative degree as a bachelor's. So it, you can only get a master's or a doctorate in collaborative piano, which is good because you need to have that training in a, um, for your undergraduate degree to actually learn some piano music, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. So you already need to know quite a bit before you even enter into the program. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In our program, it, part of the audition process is you have to give us a rep list. And if your rep list is really small, your chances of getting in are pretty slim. Oh, wow. Because it's a, it's a grind. You have to, you know, just so much music all at one time. Wow. So uh, that leads me to a number of other questions that I want to ask. I mean, uh, as you describe what a collaborative pianist is, it occurs to me that it's, um, obviously very different from what I do in my daily life as an orchestral musician. I mean, I, um, you know, I prepare, you know, standard repertoire, orchestral repertoire. Um, but after a number of years, I, I have, you know, repeat uh, rep that comes up. I mean, in, in the daily life of a collaborative pianist and the yearly life of a collaborative pianist, I mean, you have new repertoire coming at you 
all the time. So uh, it must be a tremendous amount of workload. How do you how do you um, manage your time and preparing all of that? Uh, that is a good question. Um, one thing, one very, very important thing for a collaborative pianist, if that's their track that they're going on, you have to be a good sight reader <laughs> because a lot of what we're doing is on the spot. Uh, and also you have to um, really study your music in a way. What is going to be the most difficult? What do, what can I actually sight read and not practice? That's um, so I don't know if you were going to ask me this question, but playing at horn camp, if I get the, the list of things that everybody is playing, what I'll do is look at everything. First of all, I look at what have I played? <laughs> And if I've played it and it's pretty familiar, I'm not going to practice that because there's always going to be that new stuff. And then I'll look at that new stuff and think, okay, what is the most difficult? What are the most difficult parts? And those are the things you have to practice. Uh, and then you have to rely, like I said, on your reading skills for all the other stuff. And wow. you have to have so many hours in the day to look at it too. Yeah. Well, that yeah. I'm glad that you brought that up. Because I did want to ask in relation to horn camp, uh, and you know, for those of you who may not know, um, the role of the pianist at horn camp is um, nothing less than Herculean. It's absolutely huge. I mean, you are working with fifty to fifty-five, actually more than that, probably about seventy horn players throughout mm -hmm. the week, um, regularly on all different types of repertoire from all different types of styles um, on an instrument that is not your own that you know you have no control over. Um, and we do, we try to, like you said, prep with a list of what you might expect, but even when we do that, there's a ton that just gets thrown at you last minute. And, uh, one of the amazing things, uh, many amazing things about Patty, for those of you who don't know, is that you're like an amazing team player and at camp, you know, we can just hand something to you and say, can you read this? And you're like, yeah, sure. Great. Let's go do this. Um, and it's, uh, it's evident of, of your training as a collaborative pianist to be able to do that. And it's very, very much appreciated. Um, oh, that being you. said, can you talk a little bit about your experience at camp, um, and, um, the, the workload that you face there and, um, the fact that you're willing to come back and even speak to us again is amazing. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not many pianists would, <laughs> um, well, as you know, Jesse, I I love camp. I last summer was, uh, as I told you, is my happy place. Um, and I'd mentioned this to you. One thing about horn camp as a pianist is, well, the thing that's different is we don't have any other outside life. When we're at camp, we're at camp. So when we're playing, we're just playing with you guys, and then we get to eat meals and. I don't have to do any of the daily grind of my normal life. So that makes it much more fun. Um, I think the thing that was hard for me at camp was uh, playing for so many hours a day because it was probably six to seven hours a day of playing. Um, also, some of the concerts were so long, <laughs> you know, three hours of playing on a concert without, you know, without being able to stop and say, Hey, can we fix that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are definitely known for some long recitals at camp. Yeah. I mean, the one good thing for me is that I'm very familiar with all the standard horn rep and I've played it a lot. So if someone like last summer, someone was playing Strauss two and I hadn't played it for years and years and I thought well, I can't do it but then I opened it and I oh okay well I do kind of remember it because a piece like that that's so difficult you spend so much time when you're young learning it it just kind of comes back your muscles remember so I'm lucky in that regard to play at horn camp is a little bit easier for me than probably a lot of other pianists I mean that's amazing that you can pull up Strauss too and just be like oh yeah okay I guess I'll read this I mean, <laughs> I mean or orchestral piano reductions are absolutely ridiculous. They're so, the worst. They're the worst. I yeah. It's, it's really, um, it's really impressive to me because as a horn player, and I'm sure many of our participants watching uh, can relate to this, you know, I spend um, 
significant parts of my daily life obsessing over one note at a time and even just a whole note you know i will lose sleep just like am i even going to be able to play an a whole note and make it sound pretty meanwhile you're looking at like hundreds of notes on a page at any one time and you know having to process all of that and doing it on the fly it's it's really uh, it's really impressive and it makes me feel uh, quite simple in trying to just play a pretty whole note but <laughs> <laughs> well whole notes are really hard on the piano too because we can't sustain <laughs> so oh, that's true <laughs> so i'm a little jealous of your whole notes <laughs> <laughs> i guess you can't really like you know spin the sound on a whole note on a piano no that's i talk about that a lot with my students because you know you have to when we strike a note we have to instantly think how we're going to play the next note so it doesn't stick out or, I mean, piano technique is, uh, it's pretty complicated <laughs> in that regard. I will gladly take your word for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to find out firsthand. Yeah, I know. I, I will not give you piano lessons, I promise. Oh, I appreciate yeah. it. I would not be a very good student. Mm -hmm. I, I tried and failed it <laughs> early in life and even back in college, they made me take piano and I still didn't do great with it so i'm you know, sorry it's okay it's all right i can't play the horn so there's that oh okay so we're even yeah. <laughs> we're even <laughs> um so uh one thing that i'm excited to announce about this year uh is that after talking about the workload and how much you do at camp and the amazing fact that you're willing to come back is also that we're going to have a second pianist so yes. are you excited about uh adding another position to the camp. I'm so excited. Um, well, for many reasons. One, it's just easier on the body <laughs> to have a little less work. But also, probably, I'm imagining that I'll have a little more time with the students to rehearse. Um, because if we're splitting it up, I think it's going to be very beneficial for the students to have even if it's an extra 10 minutes, it's amazing what that can do for a student just to have that extra time, especially if it's someone's first time performing. And, you know, I don't, I don't take that for granted. I mean, I know I, I don't have to think about that, but, you know, you imagine you're 16 and you've never played with a pianist before I and mean, you want that extra time. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I, you know, I, I think about myself uh, when I started out as a participant at KBHC uh, a number of years ago. And, you know, I started as a high school participant and getting to go to camp and play horn repertoire that I wanted to play and then play it with a really great pianist was an awesome opportunity. And, you know, to, to be able to even have a few more minutes with you with a great artist is, is really, really valuable. Um, and in fact, that leads me to a question that I wanted to ask, um, you know, a lot of um, a lot of our participants may not have that much experience playing with the pianist. And um, I know a number of people and performers experience nerves uh, from that, from even just needing to prepare to, to work with a pianist. Um, do you have any recommendations of how they can prepare and get in the right mindset and uh, in working with another with another great artist? Uh, well, one thing, if if they happen to have a friend that's a pianist, <laughs> they should probably ask that friend, do you mind learning this? <laughs> so I have a little familiarity. Uh, I know not everyone can do that. But it's definitely worth exploring. So you have some experience before you go. But most if if you can't do that, listening 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 to recordings good recordings preferably uh i think one of the hardest things is when you start playing with a pianist you forget to count and then you're not really listening and you don't know when to come in because you're nervous and you don't know if you did count right all of those things but if you're really really familiar and you've heard it a lot and then maybe even playing with the recording which is very helpful. I, I mean, I've heard that. Um, and yeah, and also just making sure, like I was saying, you know your entrances um, because it's amazing how many times I've played a Mozart concerto and um, 
they like the horn players will just freak out because they don't know when to come. They're so concerned about their own part that they forget that there's like these two D's they have to listen to. And I mean, it's always, you know, there has to be that first time, you know, playing with the piano. So, and, oh, and if you're doing a concerto, it's probably a good idea to listen to what it sounds like with the piano, not the orchestra, because the orchestra parts are, you know, a piano reduction is quite different than what the orchestra is playing. So it never sounds like what the orchestra is doing. And that also can throw people off. Oh, that's interesting. That's a great recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that even um, I've seen like videos, video accompanying uh, accompaniments on like YouTube, where, you know, mm -hmm. someone's recorded or done a MIDI or something you can play along with, with pieces that way. It's, it's at least helpful to have some sort of interaction. Um, you know, I'm, I'm lucky I've been able to work with a lot of great uh, pianists over the years, but when I think back to my experience, I have certainly hit all of the pitfalls that, you know, a soloist does in terms of miscounting or like missing entrances. And, you know, it's, uh, it's a little nerve wracking when you're, you think you're counting along, right? And then the, like, they get to your entrance and here it comes and there it goes. And you're just like, oh, okay, I guess I'll go now. But, um, you know, I can think of a number of coping mechanisms that performers, performers take. Um, one is just like staying strict. If they feel like they get off from the pianist, just staying where they are, staying their ground, or do they jump, you know, measures and how's that handled between the two? Oh, performers? yeah, that's a, a good point. But I don't, I, I don't want to forget to say this. Another really important thing, look at the score look play it while you're following the piano score one thing pianists have the biggest advantage because we always have everyone's part and so therefore people think we're the most responsible <laughs> because we are seeing everyone's part and that kind of goes with the question you're asking when you're playing with the pianist and you think you're off you got to go with it and it's the pianist's responsibility to find you because if you if you don't have that pact with your pianist you'll it'll be this constant chase game and oh this you don't know who's adjusting to who but i in general i like to be the one to adjust you play you come in wrong i'm gonna find you that's my job that's what i'm supposed to do oh, wow. um okay. and if i mess up well i gotta somehow get back it's not the horn player's responsibility to go with me great if they do but <laughs> it's, uh, that's not usually what happens <laughs> well and that that brings me to a number of like um things from that i remember from my past was that if i um like if i would start a piece and the tempo felt too slow you know then it's like what do I do? Do I take the slower tempo? Or if, if, I should say if the tempo is just different than what I was normally used to practicing, you know, how do I handle that? Um, and uh, I guess it's, it's about striking a delicate balance because you are collaborating with someone. And so it's a two way street of being both being flexible musicians to create an effective performance. But at the same time, you're also playing like, oftentimes like a sonata or a solo or a concerto where you're the primary voice. So you have to strike the balance of collaborating while also like being really clear with en entrances and leading so that you both right. are communicating clearly. Especially on short notice stuff, like at camp, you don't have a, a week to, you know, rehearse for an hour every day. So I, my philosophy is if I'm gonna play with somebody and it's their recital, you know, I have to play with, students here at UT sometimes. I I try not to give my interpretation because I want them to have their own voice if it's their recital. You know, there's, there's all these different scenarios, but along the lines of what if something starts too slow? So um, I am of the philosophy that you should play the way you want to play and a good collaborative pianist will know that immediately it's amazing how many times people will stop and say can we go faster and i'll say go faster and i'll be right with you yeah. <laughs> it might take me three beats but then i'll figure it out and then then we'll be together because yeah. if you yeah you it's like a a good conductor right doesn't shouldn't have to say anything he should just he or she should just show it right
Well, it's great to hear the answer to that question because I actually think it's something that a lot of performers struggle with is mm -hmm. you know, they, they don't know what is appropriate and and so right. they get lost in this like in this like stress you know this yeah. stress area of just like oh my gosh what do I do here so yeah you just move and you'll go with them that's cool yeah um, now but before we move on from this particular subject I wanted to ask you a fill in the blank question please complete this sentence. I love it when a well-prepared soloist or instrumentalist blank. Is able to play exactly the way they want to play and they are not worried if it's going to fit in with how I feel about something. Like I want to know how they want to do it. I want them to have conviction about it. And then then it's clear for me as a pianist. And so I understand. It doesn't mean that we can't discuss it or have, I can't have my opinions, but. Uh, so you want a, a confident performer who's willing to be adaptable and collaborate. Yeah. And nice to me. Oh, <laughs> always, that is the first rule. Like the first rule of performing with anyone, but definitely a pianist is, always be nice yeah i would say 99 percent of maybe even more than that 99.5 percent of the time people are incredibly grateful and nice and appreciative and it it kind of amazes me uh <laughs> how that's a pretty high percentage yeah that yeah. is really high at horn camp we aim to be at 100 percent so. Yeah, well, no, Horn Camp's 100%. But I've played with probably thousands of people. I mean, if I think about it, because of so many students. Um, I mean, yeah, so that that's a really high percentage. So that brings me to another question. Speaking of the thousands of people that you have performed with, uh, a number of those are horn players and famous horn they players. <laughs> You've collaborated with a lot of really great artists. Um, are there any stories that you can share with us or, uh, or no, <laughs> <laughs> nothing has ever happened, right? Not if, not if I ever want to be hired again. <laughs> Fair enough. That's fine. Yeah. But I have played with all, I mean, I have been so lucky, especially in the horn world. I've played with, uh, all so many of the very well-known horn players uh of the world really well it, it that explains why you're willing to uh come to horn camp and be surrounded by 70 of us and <laughs> yes our repertoire and all of our isms and yes so, yeah that's great uh, patty thank you so much this has been really awesome i'm glad you could join us today and we're really excited to feature you uh, as an artist on Horn Camp Connect, and we're very thrilled to be collaborating with you again uh, this coming summer. So any anyone who is watching today, come to Horn Camp 2024, and you will get to work with Patty. Thank you so much for having me. It's really fun being able to talk with you. Yeah, likewise. Thank you so much. All right, and tune in for our next uh, Horn Camp Connect events that we have coming up. Uh, we would love to see you there. So. See you soon. Bye. Bye.